Now this hole printed out just a couple thousandths too small in order for this to fit in there. So rather than just going back into Cura and changing the settings and, ha and experimenting with it, and it took so long to print one of these out, I forgot what it was. I think it's four, four or five hours. So I didn't want to experiment that way. As it is, I've got, what, about six or eight that I printed. But instead of changing the dimensions, I just used a three-quarter inch adjustable reamer, and that reamed out pretty well. Again, I had to tap the hole. I guess I just said that. But one other thing that I had to do is that I had a little bit of what Kevin called uh, elephant footing along here, and I sanded that. Just, I just put it on a, in an arbor in the lathe and uh, ran the sander along that a little bit. And it turned out quite nice. So this one, see it has to spin on there so that I can lock it in place. Turned out quite nice. So let me go ahead and install this direct reading one on the Atlas lathe. Let's go on over there. I guess before I step over to the lathe I need to talk about how I colored this and that was really a lot of experimentation and trouble and I spent a lot of money on it. I tried things like a Sharpie and then wiping it with a thinner and sometimes the thinner would attack the plastic so that didn't work out and, and I tried paint. I even went down and, and paid five bucks for this mini wax, min wax of black pencil, didn't work at all. I tried Listo lead, if you remember what Listo lead is, just all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden Kevin said, well, I already solved the problem for you. He said, I tried using a paint that acrylic paint that artists would use that comes in a tube you know expensive paint and uh, but notice that there's layering of course this is uh, printed in layers so the paint or anything that was real thin would kind of work its way into the layers and uh, that did not look good at all so uh, he finally said well I, I use silicone so I went down to Ace Hardware store and uh, gave me some GE silicone here, that was about five bucks. Well rubbing that on and then wiping it with a bounty towel worked just too good to be true. I couldn't believe how well that worked. So that was the solution right there. So if I were to print any of these in white, which I was going to do, but I uh, and I ordered PLA, but when it came it wasn't PLA, I had to send it back, it was ABS. So so I'm stuck with black, not stuck with it, it looks pretty nice I think, but maybe white using black silicone, which I found in the automotive department would work, but it was $8. So anyway, I'm, I'm using the black or the red with white lettering, it shows up very nice. In the comments, put down which you think is better, the red or the black. Alright, now we are going to go over and install this. One thing I forgot to tell you, you know, this Kevin is really a smart man, but when I was experimenting with the coloring, he, he, a fella hated to print out one of these, which took five or six hours, then uh, put some coloring in there, it didn't work out, and I have to start over, so he sent me the files where I had samples of these, just little segments to experiment with, and that, that was a really a neat idea, because this would print out, I think, in, in ten minutes. And I had those both in the 100 graduation and the 200 graduation. All right, back to the business at hand. I already attached this a little aluminum thing, tapped it on with this little uh, lead hammer. And now I'm ready for this. And I'll put a little oil on here off camera. And the oil does not attack this, if you're worried about that. I did some experimentation that will be in another video. There's a little washer here that didn't show up, but don't lose that. This will go on just like this. And when I tighten up this nut here, I have to be careful that I do not lock this. I want that to be able to spin. Next comes the uh, 
lock washer. Sometimes I have to go back and refer to the video on how it was assembled. <laughs> I forgot that quickly. And the Woodruff key. And the Zamac. And finally, that little nut. And then two wrenches to tighten that up. That turns okay. And next comes the little brass pin that goes in here if I can find it. That's a piece of eighth inch brazing rod, about five eighths long. And then a little screw here that I made some time ago. That's 832. And I, I made a video a long, long time ago. Tips uh, 106 making knurled thumb screws for the South Bend lathe. I think those were number 10s. This is number 8. But the principle would be the same if you have to make one of these. I like the knurled ones, not, a, not something that you get at the hardware store. And see, when I tighten this, it pushes down on the little brass rod and we'll lock this into place. There's the original 100 graduation dial, which I think was one and three quarters. This is the 200 graduation in black with white lettering, and it's two and a half in diameter. Can be zeroed out like that. And boy, does that show up nice, doesn't it? Easy to read. I kind of like the black, but I had the red on here for a while, and that was pretty awesome as well. Now let's do a dial indicator deal, although that's probably not necessary. Video is getting too long. By the way, this is the aluminum material that I use to make this ring here with the zero graduation. Now I've got the dial indicator attached again and it's zeroed out. I know you're not going to be able to see that because of the glare. And I'm on zero right here with the graduated dial. And I will turn one full turn here, which will be 200 thousandths. Like that. And I actually moved in 100 thousandths, which means that if I was taking an actual cut on a piece of steel, producing chips, I would have removed 200,000. So I call that direct reading. You might have another term for that. So we don't want to argue about that. So which is easier to read? The 80-year-old uh, dials from 1939 or the ones from 1976 or the ones from the year 2018? Here's a couple short clips of the dial being printed on the 3D printer Creality CR10. And it's been one hour and 17 minutes so far. It's now been two hours and 34 minutes. Looks like it's about halfway done. Well, it's been four hours and three minutes, and the print is done. And there it is. Needs a little cleaning up on the bottom to get the glue off. And we'll get another dial, and this one has the 100 graduations. So that print took four hours and four minutes and it's a 20% fill. I am presently sitting at my computer and I'm at the Thingiverse site. So go to Thingiverse if you want to look this up and do a search for Atlas Lathe Dials Large, and this is Kevin Ciampi's site here on Thingiverse, and there is his original CAD drawing. It's just beautiful. 
and from that he created these files and there's the uh, 100 graduation raised 200 graduations embossed 200 graduations raised and the 100 graduations embossed so check those out you can leave a comment to Kevin you can uh, download if you click here if you have any intentions at all of printing this out for your atlas lay so thank you to Kevin the reason I started this project is that it's very difficult to make one of these out of metal and to stamp them accurately and so that they look pretty even on this one you can see that it's uh, it's rather uneven even even though I made a jig it's difficult to stamp on something round so that's when I decided that rather than uh, make one out of aluminum for the atlas lathe I would uh, use 3D printed ones now take a look at the inside I cut one in half and you can see the fill that it's only about 20 percent fill we don't need a whole lot of strength for this and thanks again to Kevin in the following clip I will show you uh, the Thingiverse uh, link so check that out I'll also show that in the uh, comment section well I hope you liked the video on the 3D printed lathe dials for the late model Atlas lathes thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video and thank you to Kevin Chiampi